to our CEO quite a, a, some. Okay, sometimes we didn't uh, look at the course outline already. So what Madam want to announce, I think uh, the other subject uh, lecturers also tell you the same thing, uh, which is our week 11. So if you look at the previous course outline, week 11 from 10 of October until 14 of, of October, it should be our week 11. But then there is some adjustment over here. Uh, so that means uh, for this week, and also next week the class will still on okay until 9 of um uh, october okay until 9 of october and then week 11 for this one will be your holidays okay our binya send break yes start there by the 10 october uh madam yes i just want to confirm Mm -hmm. Do we actually remain online until our end of semester or are, are we going to go to the college? So, so far for first semester will be fully online. So that means until week 18, uh, until your exam, nah, okay, 16th of December will oh, be so fully online. so we will be returning to the college until the second semester? Yes, second semester, hopefully everyone will be back to college. Nah. Oh, all right. Yes. But there was uh, some sort of confusion. Uh, but so far, so far, it's just online. Uh, still, right. P, uh, still our PDPR. Okay. So everyone's clear uh, uh, regarding to the holidays one. Uh, so uh, how about the practical test? Uh, you said, oh, it's after the... Uh, mm, practical test supposedly will be on week 11. That means after the same break, but... Uh, until now, Madam, not sure yet because there is no uh, announcement for practical test. Okay, so that means we on hold first. Lah. Maybe it's still the same after the semester break. So that means we postpone one more week. So uh, we're not sure either it's going to be after the right after the mid, mid break or two weeks after. Yeah, not sure yet. Not, not sure yet. Okay, so right. Madam akan akan umumkan nanti lah setakat ini practical test uh, kita on hold dulu. Uh, on hold dulu maksudnya dua minggu ni kita tengok macam mana peng pengumuman daripada unit lah. Okay, boleh ya? Boleh Madam. Okay, lagi satu adalah awak punya assignment. So just now Madam have already sent a... Uh, the announcement into your telegram group those who are submitting before 25th uh, madam will try my best to uh, return your uh, draft uh, but uh, madam cannot promise now when i will return because quite a few numbers still madam need to assess okay uh, and then some general things that madam see overall is made the main problem will be your citation uh, so, kalau sesiapa yang ada masalah dekat citation, sebenarnya sebelum ni Madam sudah bagi dah. Okay, citation macam mana? Okay, let's say kalau awak tak ada author ke, tak ada dates ke, and then that one you'd have to search yourself. For example, more than two author, then you put uh, A and B and then together with the years inside a bracket. Madam jumpa banyak sangat yang bagi reference terus. That is not what we want. Uh, reference letak last kali, bukan letak pada part citation. Citation maksudnya kita letak shortcut sahaja. Okay, satu macam satu singkatan sahaja. Okay, where you want to refer. Okay, refer to the reference at the back. Uh, so, dekat citation, jangan letak full reference. Uh, Madam jumpa banyak sangat copy yang bagi Madam reference terus. Uh, the one, uh, Madam want the correct format of the citation. Uh, how you are going to cite it. Sebenarnya dia sangat simple. Uh, boleh boleh cuba untuk uh, survey sendiri macam mana dia punya rupa. Kalau awak punya citation lebih kurang sama macam APA, Madam akan accept. Tapi bukan bagi website, bukan bagi uh, reference penuh. Okay? Ada masalah ada dekat citation? Untuk sesiapa yang belum hantar? Hmm. Tak ada ya? Okay, so far, Madam, uh, siapa yang sudah hantar draft, uh, those who already submit the draft, if no problem, or the overall marks, you got 45 and above, Madam akan terus tanda dan pulangkan balik dengan maka uh, terus Madam, Madam akan bagi. Unless awak punya draft ada banyak tempat kena buat pembetulan, termasuk citation, Madam akan pulangkan. 
Okey. Tapi a uh, copy yang madam sudah tanda awak jangan remove. Uh, awak tepekkan satu lagi uh, untuk satu assignment yang awak sudah buat correction. So that means the mark one you keep there and then you submit another copy. So madam can see what madam have already marked. Sebab banyak sangat madam tak tanda, madam tak ingat untuk siapa madam tanda apa. Uh, so untuk madam yang sudah tanda ya, awak jangan remove. Uh, you just keep it there. Uh, madam tahu boleh terus hantar kan second copy. Dia tak payah, tak, tak payah unsubmit. You just... Uh, Attach another file. Okay, untuk sesiapa yang uh, perlu buat correction lah, you don't have to remove the submitted copies ya. Yeah? Okay, ada satu lagi adalah untuk YouTube kan, YouTube punya reference di, tidak diterima eh. Ada beberapa orang yang guna YouTube punya reference sebab YouTube dia tak ada perkataan. And dia tak ada writing, dia tak ada sentences yang proper. So, we cannot accept YouTube as the reference. Okay, so untuk sesiapa yang guna YouTube, tolong removekan dan carikan awak punya uh, reference daripada website yang ada ayat punya. Yang ada ayat yang betul punya. YouTube tidak, tidak diterima ya. Okay, ada soalan ke untuk assignment? Sebelum so, Madam proceed. Ya. Ya, tak ada ni eh. Apa ni? Ya marka untuk consultation tu. Marka untuk consultation? Ah macam assignment assignment bio ada marka untuk consultation. So yang chemist tak ada eh? Tak ada. Okey. Hmm, Madam uh, buat yang ini draft untuk awak semak supaya awak dapat markah yang uh, tertinggi yang awak boleh lah. Uh, so this one is just to help you. Uh, but that still some of you haven't, uh, didn't submit the draft. So Madam will see how I can help you lah. Uh, still quite numbers lah. But so far MS32, half of you Madam have already re written with marks. Uh, so... Yang lain uh, bolehlah nanti Madam tengok macam mana Madam boleh tolong. Tapi setakat ini draft yang Madam nak tanda masih banyak lagi ya. So sabar ya untuk siapa yang belum dapat balik lagi. Okay. So ada soalan lagi untuk kita punya assignment? Ada. So if you don't have problem, then we proceed to our content of today. Okay, so Manda will check with you the polarity. Uh, and then we will entering your 4.3, the rest of hybridization. Uh, so hari ini untuk dua jam ini, kita akan fokus kepada hybridization. Macam mana nak lukis, macam mana nak explain. Okay. Um, so you need to get ready with your notes and quite a few piece of blank paper. Ah. Either you using A4 or you using uh, test pen. Nah, so awak kena ada kan banyak kopi ataupun awak ada sediakan template yang ada bagi dalam Google Drive. Okay, that one can be used also. Okay, so let's us start with some uh, recap. Madam, which one, Madam? Which uh, of the template that you mentioned? Template yang ada dalam Google Drive. Kejap ya. Is it the one that uh, written C2H6 part A? Yes, those. Kejap, Mada nak tengok dari mana eh. Uh, let me think first ya. Okay, my Google Drive. Kejap ya. Kalau awak tekan pada my link yang Mada bagi hari tu kan. Hmm, it's me already. Okay, no problem. Uh, it's something like this. Oh, this is the template that Madam said. Uh, template untuk uh, one central species or the template with multiple center. Uh, so this one also. So in the my link, Madam my link over there, there is a few of template lah. So two of this. Okay, with one center species and also multiple center or multiple bonds. Okay, later we'll use this template. So come back to our recaps, yeah. The recap, Madam's uh, recorded a uh, short videos, but apologies, like it's not a very proper one. 
sebab sambil jaga anak ni dia sambil buat untuk awak. So kalau boleh ada masalah awak boleh bagi tahu madam eh. Maybe some of that typing error lah. Okay. So to recap with you all this one. Okay. In order to know our polarity for a molecule. So sometimes the question was straight away asked. Did you use the polarity for um, ABC molecule? Okay, so you need to understand the polarity means molecular polarity. So in that case, you need to first figure out how is your Lewis structures look like. Okay, and then after you got your Lewis structures, that means you're following the step one until step five. Lah. Okay, find your Lewis structure. And then after that, you figure out how many electron groups are they, uh, electron group arrangement, and then figure out what is the molecular shape. So this is your step two, figure out the molecular shape. Uh, make sure our polarity based on the shape. And then when you have already got your molecular shape, you need to identify whether it is symmetrical or asymmetrical. Okay, something like a mirror image. Lah. Uh, symmetrical, we can say that all basic shape. If you remember your basic shape, huh? linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal and also octahedral yang lima uh, basic shape itu semua adalah symmetrical but there is one requirement okay you need to make sure all the surrounding are the same so, so senang katalah semua basic shape yang ada surrounding atom yang sama dia adalah symmetrical but if let's say you got one of the surrounding atom is different from the others then it will fall, that fall to the category of asymmetrical. Ha. Tapi Meda hanya bagi tahu symmetrical adalah untuk semua basic shape. Tapi untuk uh, bentuk yang lain-lain, contoh dia ada combination lone pair dengan bonding pair, then you have to see. So, dia tak ada satu summary untuk semua. Okay, satu summary hanya untuk semua basic shape. So, already atom sama, dia symmetrical. Yang lain kita kena tengok satu persatu. Uh, kita kena tengok molecular shape dia macam mana, uh, combination bonding pair, lone pair dia berapa. Uh, baru kita boleh tentukan sama ada symmetrical ataupun asymmetrical. Okay, so once you know about the molecular shape, the next step we can proceed is to draw your bond arrow. Uh, so if you still remember, your bond arrow looks something like this with a head with a tail, the head pointing towards a more electronegative atom. Now the tails is for a more, uh, is a less electronegative atom. Nah, so kena tahu lah polar arrow kita nak lukis macam mana. Okay. At the same time, this po uh, polar arrow, okay, is also means your dipole moment for an individual polar bond. Okay. Dipole moment sama dengan awak punya bond arrow lah. Okay. So after you have drawn all the uh, bond arrow, then we will see your resulting dipole moment. So when you want to look at the resultant dipole moment, you have to see whether they can cancel out or cannot. So ambil contoh yang hari tu kita kita pakai lah kalau central atom boleh gerak, uh, maksudnya dia ada dipole moment. Uh, so kalau uh, central atom tak ada, maknanya dia static, resultant dipole moment kosong, jadi uh, berjadi dekat dia punya molecular polarity. Okay, so in our last, we need to look at this one. There is some corrections in the notes last week, ya. Uh, kalau siapa-siapa yang tak dapat nak catat untuk dekat sini, ada pembetulan, ya. Kalau mu sama dengan kosong, dia adalah non-polar. So, if mu is not equal to zero, then it will be polar. Okay, so there is some correction. You need to take notes. So, this is a guideline. But still, you need to make sure your molecular shape according to the Lewis structure is correct in order for you to proceed. Okay, so there is some uh, checking up for your Google Classroom exercises. Okay, ada beberapa orang yang belum hantar ya. Uh, so, kalau belum hantar binya, pastikan awak hantar nanti selepas awak buat pembetulan. So, Madam, we'll see who is submitting it right, uh, late over there. Okay. So, for question two, 
last lesson is the exercises for you to deduce the polarity of PCL3 and also PCL5. Show dipole moment, which is your polar arrow or your bone arrow. Okay, so the orange color ones over here is a guideline what you need to do in order to compare your molecular polarity. Okay, so Lewis structures, your electron group, EGA stands for electron group arrangement. And then figure out what is the molecular shape. So in the answer over here, the Lewis structures, Madam Shake straight away put it inside a shape. Uh, so kalau ni tang, nampak dekat Lewis structure ni, sebenarnya Madam sudah masukkan dia punya shape. So in this case, you can see PCL3, electron group we have four with a combination of three bonding pair and also one lone pair. Okay, so siapa yang sudah tulis combination dia boleh check ya. And one lone pair. So in this case, the EGA electron group arrangement is a uh, tetrahedral. Oh, dia punya EGA, electron group arrangement adalah tetrahedral. Tapi shape dia adalah apa? Kalau awak tengok dekat PCL3 ni. What is the shape actually? Trigonal pyramidal, sir. Yeah, very good. Well done. Okay, we have a trigonal pyramidal. Okay, because we have four electron group with a combination three to one. Uh, three bonding pair, one lone pair. So it gives you trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so bila awak ada lukisan, tolong tuliskan nama uh, shape dia juga lah, trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so we look at PCL3 first. Yeah, you see the general formula X3E. Okay, also give you the combination. So sama ada awak bagi general formula, ada pun awak bagi combination. Okay, dua-dua boleh Okay, and then after that, we want to deduce the bond polarity first. So since all the surrounding atoms are the same, so PCL is a polar bond due to difference in electronegativity. So ketiga-tiga bond adalah polar bond dengan dipole moment yang sama. Okay, so on your Lewis structure with the molecular shape, you need to draw the polar bond. Okay, the polar arrow. And then direct it to your chlorine lah because chlorine is more electronegative. Okay, so in, in order for you to determine the resulting dipole moment, we see the shape over here is asymmetrical. Okay, so about the atas sini, kalau empat electron group sebenarnya di tetrahedral untuk electron group arrangement. Tapi salah satu bond adalah kita punya lone pair. So maksudnya kita punya uh, shape adalah asymmetrical. Okay, and since the shape is asymmetric, uh, asymmetrical, okay, the dipole moment do not cancel out each other. So in this case, your resulting dipole moment is not equal to zero and therefore PCL3 is a polar molecule. Okay, so um, any questions for PCL3 in this case? Ada soalan tu untuk PCL3? We must mention the symmetrical dengan asymmetrical tu eh. Ya. Yeah. So yang metal highlight kan awak boleh tambah lah. Ada yang uh, tak, tak letak kan. Uh, letakkan dalam awak punya explanation. Okay, then. Okay. Or you can make your sentence into two sentences. You can say uh, PCL3 is asymmetrical and then full stop. And then you explain. All the dipole moments uh, do not cancel out each other. Yeah. You can make it two sentences. Easier for you to understand. Nah? Okay. Whereas for PCL5, that we can see over here, there is five electron groups. And all these five electron groups are bonding pairs. So that means the shape for PCL5 is basic shape. Surrounding atoms are all the same. So this is the case where we say the shape is symmetrical. Uh, the Cassini symmetrical is about the other basic shape. Then surrounding atom there are the same. So the other symmetrical. So when we say symmetrical, of course, your individual dipole moment will be all the same. Uh, so about surrounding atoms, sama. Electronegativity, semua adalah sama. So they can all cancel out each other and resultant dipole moment equals to zero. Therefore, PCL5 is a non-polar molecule. 
Ya. Ya. Kita boleh explain tak yang asymmetrical dengan symmetrical si tak faham sangat? Tak faham sangat. Uh, if can try to put macam in lah. Uh, macam mana nak bezakan lah? Hmm. That is a mirror things that we need to see uh, see in 3D. So the best thing you can do is by the animations lah. Okay, the animation that Madam show uh, using this website. Which Madam have already put inside your uh, OneNote. So, kalau boleh lah try to put in. Sebab dal kalau awak tengok pada past your questions, also one of the requirement is asymmetrical and symmetrical. Boleh ke? Kena, kena practice. Asymmetrical, symmetrical ni mana faham memang kena practice. Ha, tapi yang mana boleh bagi tahu adalah kalau untuk basic shape. Awak ingat basic shape. Sebenarnya so, atom semua sama. Dia adalah asymmetrical. Okay. Okay. Ha, medium. Ya. Uh, yang apa? Uh, difference in electronegativity tu boleh tak guna simbol? Uh, asalkan awak faham lah yang delta EN boleh. Boleh uh, kita rilas. Okay. Okay, ada soalan lagi? Ada. Uh, madam, yes. square panel is considered symmetrical or so on. Okay, madam, give you examples. Huh? If you, let's say you say square planar. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Uh. Madam, give you using symbol. So let's say they get sini. Okay, let's say we have a square planar last time is XEF4. Okay, XEF4, yeah. So madam, bagi contoh, eh, Ifan pun dengar juga, eh, yang lain pun fokus juga. Okay, so let's say we know that XEX4, uh, Louis structure nanti awak figure macam mana nak buat. Sebab so, XEF4 dia ada dua lone pair. So according to Vesper, we will put your lone pair as far as possible. So one on the top, one on the bottom. So in this case, um, your dipole moment are all the same. So that means the one that Mandan draw, uh, you follow, uh, towards the left-hand side top one will cancel with the bottom one. Sebab dia dalam satu line, cuma dia punya direction perbeza. So, kalau saya uh, tarik atas ke kiri, tarik bawah ke kanan, so dia akan cancel off untuk dua bond ini. Okay. Whereas another side, for this one, on the bottom left and then the upper right, dia akan cancel off. So, in this case, we will say uh, this shape is symmetrical. So, but kalau awak nampak mirror dia, okay, is it symmetrical? That, that means on the... Uh, upside and downside, left and right, they are the same. Okay, so we will say this shape is symmetrical. Okay, kalau sekarang Madam, sama juga Madam guna square planar as a, uh, as a molecular shape. Eh? Contoh eh, Madam put XEF3CL. Let's say for example. Okay, so comparing between both of this, FFFCL. Still, I'm going to have two long pair up and bottom. But in this case, what can you see? Apa yang awak boleh nampak dekat sini? Dia masih sama square planar. So, what can you deduce over here? Can anyone tell me whether it's symmetrical, asymmetrical, and why is it so? Boleh ke? CL, yeah, more electronegativity ke? Hmm, dia punya elektronegativiti ada salah satu surrounding atom tak sama. Ha. So hmm. in this case, we will see. Okay. Okay. Madam, Madam mula daripada yang sama eh. So that means the bottom left ah. You see this one and this one, they will cancel. Ha. Sebab satu tarik ke kiri, satu tarik ke kanan. Dekat plan yang sama. So opposite, opposite uh, side but with the same strength, they will cancel out. Okay, tapi kalau untuk line yang satu lagi, okay, plane yang satu lagi, hadap ke foreign, I have one uh, polar arrow. But this polar arrow, this polar bond is much stronger because foreign is more electronegative. Tapi kalau awak tengok dekat XECL, dia punya polar arrow kecil. 
structure. Okay, so in this case, this shape we will say it is asymmetrical. Why? Because your surrounding atom in this case is different, even though you have a square planar. So, kenapa Madam tadi cakap kita tak ada satu summary untuk merangkumi all square, square planar dia mesti polar ke non-polar. Tak. Kita kena tengok surrounding atoms. Is that good for you? Boleh ya? So, Aya? Uh, xenon is classified as noble gas. Yes. But why does it react with, uh, with Zenon... chlorine? Xenon is very bottom on the groups already. It's around uh, period 5 or period 6 like that. So that means when uh, the sun is getting bigger and bigger, electron on the outside uh, is held less likely towards your nucleus. So in this case, xenon can share the electron. Okay? Xenon can because all, uh, due to the size and due to the nucleus attraction is much weaker compared to, uh, if you can see, neon, helion, argon sitting at the top of your period. Okay, so xenon boleh, yeah? So it depends kepada awak binya formula lah, tengok dia bagi apa. Okay, so kalau Madam bagi dua contoh ni eh, dia boleh nampak lah dekat sini kita binya resulting dipole moment due to the shape. Asymmetrical or symmetrical. So you can do comparison. This one is non-polar. Okay, this one is polar. Is that okay for you, Sue? Uh, yes. Okay, um, I just... uh, but I have one more question. What about molecule with only two atoms? Do we need to state that it is symmetrical or asymmetrical? With two um, atoms only inside molecule. Uh, yeah, no central, kind of okay. no central. Uh, for example, if we say CN. Uh, so in this case, CN minus, uh, CN minus over here. If there is only two atoms, there is no center. Therefore, you don't have to write whether it's symmetrical or asymmetrical. That's about the, it, because it doesn't have any central atom in this case. Central atom is when you have more than two atoms. Three, four, five, six, and then there will be a center. Oh, and uh, I have another question about like this CN because it is an ion. Mm -hmm. Then what about its polarity? Then what will be its polarity? <laughs> if you got a uh, an ion, the polarity is always polar. But you still have to refer to the explanations about resulting dipole moment. Uh, so CN minus normally we won't look at the polarity in this case. Oh, and then is it possible that um, it is symmetrical but it is an ion? <laughs> no, no center, no symmetrical. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, line eh, so tanya soalan ini our syllabus, eh? you don't have to, you have to, <laughs> don't have to know about the uh, anion, whether it's polar, non-polar, still depends on your shape, okay, to determine the polarity. Oh, kita masih ikut jalan lagi eh. Okay, Madam tak ajar sebab tak nak confuse kan awak. Nanti ada ada soalan banyak Madam kenapa ni ni ni. Okay, we focus one by one. So you need to uh, make sure you understand how to determine the shape and then the polarity. So revise again. Okay, for the exercises over here, Madam haven't uh, uploaded the answer for you because I'm having problem in editing the answer. So, dekat sini, Madam boleh jawab lah awak punya soalan kalau ada yang nak tanya soalan dekat exercise ini. Is there any questions or you want to wait for the answer after Madam edited? Tak ada ya, tak ada kalau macam ni nanti waktu Madam uh, dah siap jawapan, Madam upload dekat Google Drive and then you can access from there. Okay. So that's about polarity. I will go, come back again into polarity when we have the, uh, we, we go into 4.4. 4. 4.4, 4. 4, we will revise again the polarities. So in our last lesson also, we talk about the direct ov orbital overlapping. Uh, so this is your valence bond theory. We recap a little bit now. 
So valence bond theory, you will learn how the covalent bond is made by overlapping between two orbitals. So last uh, lesson, Madam talked about the direct orbital overlap. That means we are using the pure S orbital and or the pure P orbital. For example, 1S with 1S, 1S with 2P, 2P with 2P, and etc. So this is what we call direct uh, orbitals overlap using original orbital uh, that we have. And there's two modes. We have side to end-to-end uh, -end overlapping, creating a sigma bond. Okay, and then we have side-by-side -side overlapping, um, which involve p orbital. And then multiple bond, we always start with sigma bond. And then if you've got more than one bond, or more than one line, that means double or triple bond, then the second and the third line will be your pi bond. Okay, so we come into the real content of hybridization. But first of all, anyone can tell Madam what it means by hybrid? Any idea what it means by hybrid? Can anyone give me an example? Hybrid? A very easy one. Say the hybrid. Sorry? Kereta. Kereta kan? Kereta macam mana hybrid kan? What oh, it means by a hybrid car? Dia guna elektrik dengan petrol. Hmm, guna elektrik dengan guna petrol pada kereta yang sama kan? Hybrid. So that means you uh, innovate okay, to create a new product. Apa lagi yang hybrid? Ada tak idea lain yang hybrid? Binatang. Binatang yang hybrid. Uh, campuran antara binatang A dengan species A and species B hybrid. Ada lagi ke? Tumbuhan. Tumbuhan, binatang. Okay. Okay. The most common one now we are in COVID-19 pandemic, right? So we were something called hybrid hospital. Do you ever heard about, about that? Hybrid hospital. Must uh, be host. Huh? The hospital is uh, designated as a COVID hospital, but at the same time, it serves as a normal hospital. Yes, that's also hybrid. So that means they synchronize and then they create a new thing. Okay, so untuk kita bina topic 4 in A, okay, topic, uh, topic 4.3, we also doing hybridizations. So just now we said direct orbital overlap using pure S, pure P. Okay. Hybrid, now we want to mix around to create a new orbitals, which we call as hybrid orbitals. Okay, so looking at the definitions here, yeah? Missing of two or more atomic orbitals. Okay, mesti lebih daripada dua. Dia mungkin antara tiga atomic orbital, empat atomic orbital pun boleh. Okay, so missing two or more atomic orbitals to form a new set of equivalent hybrid orbital. So take notes on the words atomic or hybrid. Atomic orbital, that means it's individual, S or P or D orbitals. Tapi hybrid, dia ada nama lain. Okay, so the new sets of these hybrid orbitals, they are actually more stable. Okay, they can form the uh, bond, the covalent bond, following your molecular shape. Kalau guna yang uh, atomic orbital, dia tak dapat nak wujudkan awak punya molecular shape. So in this case, uh, your hybrid orbital after the overlapping will give you the shape of the molecule that you have drawn for your Lewis structure. Okay. Uh, in another word, we will say the molecular shape in your Lewis structures will look exactly the same of your hybrid orbitals overlapping. Okay, boleh catat ya, molecular shape. Dia adalah sama bila kita lukiskan overlapping. So, you highlight for the second point over here. You will have the same shape as molecular shape. Okay, and there is five types of hybrid orbitals over here. We name it as SP, SP2, SP3, SP3D, and till SP3D2. Ada lima. Dia sama macam awak punya electron group arrangement. And we'll see how. 
Okay, and a very important one over here, which is in the red color box over here, number of hybrid orbitals is equal to your number of atomic orbital mix. So, berapa S orbital yang awak guna, berapa P yang awak guna, berapa D yang guna, akan hasilkan nombor hybrid orbital yang sama. So, let's just see in this table. Now, fill it together, yeah? So, the first column over here, number of electron groups or your electron group arrangement. So, kita ada basic shape dekat sini. Ada lima basic shape. Start dengan linear. Okay, start with two electron groups. So, linear, the type of hybrid orbital is sp. So, this sp come from when you mix around your s pure orbital, okay, s atomic orbital with one p orbital. Okay. So, if for you to recall, yeah, S, we have only one orbital. Okay, P, we have three orbitals. So, S, we have one orbital. P, we have three. The positive one, negative one, zero. Do you still remember? Ingat lagi tak? Ada tiga nombor untuk P. Okay. So, maksudnya tiga orbital untuk P, kan? P sub shell. Untuk D, ada berapa? Mm, um, lima. Lima kan? Five, uh, for D subshell, we have five orbital. We have negative two until positive two. No, five orbital for D subshell. Three orbitals for P subshell. And for S, we are only one. Okay, so mixing S orbital with one P give you SP. So the molecular geometry of this hybrid orbitals look like a dumbbell also. Ah, tapi ini bukan dumbbell macam P orbital tadi. Ini adalah SP. So, if for the dumbbell shape kan, sebelum ni kita belajar, 2P. Maksudnya satu bulatan ini adalah 2P. But this one, okay, the one that we are drawing for hybrid, that means this is SP, one side over here. The other side also we need to label as SP. Perbeza daripada P pure orbital. Okay, P atomic orbital. Dia satu dumbbell baru satu P orbital. Tapi bila kita ada dumbbell hybrid orbital, satu half loop dekat sini adalah SP. Another half loop is as another SP. Okay, we look at another electron groups over here. When we have three electron group, it has the uh, electron group arrangement of trigonal planar. Then the type of hybrid orbitals will be sp2. Awak kira dekat sini lah. S ada satu. Okay, P ada dua. So, campuran dekat sini bagi awak tiga. Uh, so, three electron group in this case. And it's made up of s plus 2p. Satu s, dua p. Okay, so in this case, the shape will be s trigonal planar. So, awak punya hybrid orbital nampak macam ni. Macam satu bunga dengan tiga pedal. Can you see over here? Boleh ke? So, untuk setiap loop dekat sini, tolong labelkanlah satu loop adalah SP2, SP2, SP2. Mereka guna warna lain eh. Awak pun boleh guna warna lain juga. Oh, so, that means each of the half loop represent one hybrid orbitals. So, dia punya shape samalah dengan electron group arrangement awak. Okay, so guess your four electron group arrangement is mix, mixing of which orbitals? Manner of which orbital? 1s and how many p? 3. 3p. So it gives you four hybrid orbitals, one from s and three from the p orbitals. So four hybrid orbitals make up of four different atomic orbitals. So s, p, p, p. Give you sp3. So, dekat sini, uh, electron group is the same as the hybrid orbitals. And let's look at the molecular geometry. Tetrahedrals, right? So, we have four loops over here. Uh, seems like the one that we did it before, right? AXXX. Uh, something similar. But now, kita kembangkan dia dalam orbital. And then you can label it as sp3, 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 and sp3. Each of the loop you need to label. Okay. 
So yang lain kita teruskan eh boleh kat boleh ke? Boleh. Boleh. Okay, five electron group to gonna uh, by pyramidal is made up of S P three D. So one S, three P, and one D. Okay, so trigonal by pyramidal. If you look at the electron group arrangement before this, we have some shape like this with the bond angle one hundred and twenty and ninety. So shape dia pun sama juga lah. Wah lukis uh, up and down one each, and then on the planar over here we have a trigonal. Ah, uh, so macam satu bunga lah. Okay, and then we label each of them is sp three D, sp three D, sp three D. Setiap satu kena label. Madam, ya. Ah, uh, yang ni kena tulis angle dia juga ke? Kena tulis apa? Ah, uh, dekat orbital ni kena tulis ang bond angle dia juga ke? Ah, uh, setakat ni Madam tak tulis, tapi awak kena kena kenalkan bond angle dia. Ah, uh, now Madam didn't write lah, but if you want, you can write at the side corner here. Oh, bond okay. angle is one hundred twenty and ninety. Yang ini satu kosong sembilan point lima. Dia sama macam molecular shape. Uh, this one's 120, this one's 180, yes? Do we need to label it inside of the uh, drawing or can we just uh, draw an arrow and just label them? Mm, don't draw an arrow. Kalau nak label outside tanpa arrow sebab nanti dia ada banyak label yang kena labelkan. So, oh, we... so we can, so if it doesn't fit, we can actually label yes. it outside but uh, don't draw an arrow to it. Yeah, yes. All Otherwise, right. you will make your drawing very complicated. We make it as simple as possible, but needs to label. Okay, and then last one, we have our six electron group, which is octahedral. So it makes up of six uh, atomic orbital. S with, sorry, I made a change back to red color, yeah? Okay, so 1S and 3P and 2D. So S, P, 3D, 2. So over here also you can calculate lah. Over here total up it will be 6. So 6 hybrid orbitals equals to 6 atomic orbitals. So in this case, your shape look like a tetrahedral as well. Up and down 1 and then right, left and right you got 2 each. And then every single loop you have to label. Uh, so dalam kertas awak dekat situ, kalau tak dapat label, label kat outside pun boleh. Uh, tapi kena make sure lah setiap satu kena label. Okay. So in your drawing, why Madam said you need a piece of paper because of the label. We need to put it big enough for you to put the labels in. Okay. So the bone angle for our octahedral will be 90. Uh, yang itu untuk extra uh, um, things for you to label inside here. Okay. Boleka? Ini video. bagi masa sikit eh untuk awak lukis. So it's, it will look like your um, electron group arrangement. Something like that. Uh, but you are drawing it a little bit fatter. Uh, besar sikit and large sikit dia punya orbital. Okay, so SP, SP2, SP3, SP3D and SP3D2. Five hybridizations only. Medium lah. Uh, exam pun ada kena lukis macam ni ke? As uh, last week Hazim pun tanya. So you are lucky because your examination is uh, online. So I don't think it will ask you to draw but you need to recognize. Uh, awak kena tahu drawing dia macam mana. Tapi sebab online, Madam tak rasa dia boleh suruh awak lukis lah. Yeay. Tapi kena tahu. Jangan ye terlalu cepat eh. Kena tahu jugalah. Ha. You are lucky. Hmm. Uh, unlucky in, in in some meaning. Lucky in another meaning lah. Unlucky sebab online memang penat lah Madam faham. Nak fokus pun susah kan. Haa. Uh -uh. Mereka tahu, mereka faham tapi jangan ambil kes kesempatan lah ya. Apa yang perlu buat, kena buat. Okay. Right, so kita carry on eh. 
uh, how are we going to um, incorporate the hybridizations for what we have done before? Okay, so looking at this flow chart, yeah, steps in determining your type of type of hybrid orbital. So first of all, still the same Lewis structures, and then on the bottom over here, madam, and uh, uh jot, jot over here, check former charge. So if let's say your former charge for all the atoms inside the Lewis structure is zero, then no problem. You don't have to worry. Uh, the one that you need to write in the former charge will be the one that having values. Uh, our either former charge negative satu, positive satu, ah, uh, yang itu akan jadi masalah untuk hybridization nanti. Okay, kalau semua kosong tak ada masalah kita proceed. Okay, so step two over here determine number of electron group. So as usual, number of uh, electron group, electron group arrangement, and then determine our molecular shape in step three. Okay, and then step four, we need to identify your hybridizations of central atom. So normally we focus on central atoms and terminal atom if needed. So kenapa kita cakap terminal atom if needed? So boleh catat kat sini dulu eh. If the terminal atoms, terminal maksudnya surrounding eh. Terminal atom or surrounding atoms has pi bond. Uh, kalau dia ada pi bond, then kita kena buat hybridization. Kalau dia macam single bond saja, sigma bond saja, no need. We use the atomic orbital for surrounding. Okay, so you need to make take notes. Huh? Every time, we focus first in the center. Our center, we need to see the hybridization. So let's look at the examples to guide you further on this flow chart. Okay, we start with our question number one, the first one. Awak buat juga eh untuk uh, structure dia. So the question say that determine the hybridization state. So whether it's sp, sp3, sp3d, something like that. Okay, of the central atom in each of the following molecules. So we start off with sf4. Okay. So sulfur, six valence electron. How about fluorine with four fluorine? It gives you. Can any revise juga your opinion Lewis structure, yeah? Seven valence electron give you 28 and the overall over here is 34. So, if you look at the structures, what will be its electron groups? Okay, any skeletal structure, sulfur dekat tengah sebab dia least electronegative. Lepas tu kita penuhkan surrounding atoms. So untuk foreign surrounding atom, each of them kita top up lagi 6 uh, lone pair. Okay, tinggal berapa kalau kita sudah top up semua lone pair kat foreign? Tinggal berapa lagi? Dua. Dua. Letakkan mana? Dua. Dekat atas S. Uh, S. One non pair and the S, eh, the sulfur. On the sulfur. Yes. Okay, so about surrounding, nanti awak kena check balik semua total valence electron dia adalah 34. Okay, so this is your structure. Okay, and then we want to know what is your electron group, Madam Guna Shot Form, eh? So how many electron groups are they? Five, four. Five. Combination? One lone, one, lone, pair. one lone pair, four bonding pair. Yes, one lone pair, four bonding pair. So if we look at the EGA, electron group arrangement, it is? Electron group dia je lah. Triangular. Yeah, dia equal electron group ya. Yeah. Including our binyal bonding pair dengan lone pair. So trigonal by... Pyramidal. Ah, so ini adalah basic shape dia. Dia punya electron group arrangement. Tapi molecular shape dia ialah apa? Kalau combination dia adalah 4-1. Tetra. Siso. Ya, siso. Patah balik kepada ke, kepada awak punya table. So under category 5 electron group combination 4-1 give you siso shape. So, lah, awak nampak dekat sini, dia lupa dia macam satu sisok. Without lone pair, molecular shape ini, 
Okay, kita hanya tengok pada bonding pair. Yang lain kita tengok semua bond, bonding pair, lone pair. Hanya molecular shape saja yang kita fokus kat bonding pair sahaja. Electron group, electron group arrangement, you have to consider all of this. Lone pair, bonding pair sebab electron group, lone pair pun kira sebagai satu group. Okay, so this one is revision. So now we entering hybridization. So hybridization depends on? Hybridization depends on what? Siapa ingat? Depends kepada e group, electron group, electron group arrangement ataupun molecular shape. Molecular shape. Eh. Electron group. Dia sama macam molecular shape. Tapi dia ikut dia punya electron group arrangement. Tengok pada title. Tengok pada title dekat sini. Madam bulatkan dekat sini. Nampak kan? So kalau dia linear uh, with two electron group, dia sp. Kalau tiga, trigonal planar as electron group arrangement, dia sp2. Dia punya rupa macam shape. Tapi ingat rupa kita hanya ambil contoh uh, basic shape dia pun sama lah. Uh, tetrahedral dia ada empat loop. Okay. Kita patah balik ke sini. Okay. So hybridization for SF4 depends on your electron group arrangement or electron group which is SP3D. Is that okay? So kita nak tentukan awak punya central atom sahaja. Are you still with me, class? Yes, madam. Okay. Ataupun madam adjustkan dekat sini lah hybridization kita letak kat sini. So awak nampak hybridization dengan electron group dia sama. Molecular shape dia, kita hanya tengok pada lone pair sahaja, uh, pada bonding pair sahaja. Okay, so for this one, sp3d ada lima hybrid orbital. Okay, so yang ini EG, EGA hybridization, kita masukkan lone pair dengan bonding pair, kedua-dua jenis pair. Okay. So lukisan kemudiannya, kita tengok dia punya hybridization state dulu. Okay, drawing will be in the template. So how about B? Okay, let's just see B, B, E, F, F2. So, shape dia, sorry, dia punya Lewis structures. Kalau beryllium, kita stop dekat incomplete octet, ya? Yeah? Okay, so tell me about its electron group, electron group arrangement and hybridization. Electron group ada berapa? Two. Dua. Combination? Uh, two bonding pair. Two bonding pair only. So electron group arrangement is linear. Okay, so linear over this case, two electron group this view the hybridizations of SP. Ah, molecular shape. Sebab dia tak ada lone pair kan. So molecular shape sama jugalah. Dia adalah linear. So basic shape jugalah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's foreign. Yeah. Okay. No problems. We change it back to foreign. Thank you. B F two. Yeah. Okay. Right. So after this, we have C, which is silicon. Silicon from which group? What is the valence electron for silicon? Four. 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 Okay. So, chlorine over here give you 32 overall. 
Okay, so silicon, similar like our carbons, right? So in this case, Madden draw it uh, straight away according to the shape. Lah. Uh, oh, you want to draw Lewis structures also, no problem. So how many electron group in this case? Four. 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 And we only got four bonding pair. Electron group arrangement? Tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. Tetrahedral. So how about its hybridization? For electron groups only. So you if you're using your fingers, right, you have S, P, P, P. So what will it become? SP3. SP3. Okay. Better simplify lagi eh. Kita tengok uh, shape. Lepas tu kita tentukan dia punya hybridization. So in this case, xenon uh, tetrafluoride. We have two lone pair in the middle. So tell me the electron group. Okay, tell me the electron groups. How many electron groups are they? Six. Six. What is the combination? Four bonding pair, two lone pair. Okay, four bonding pair, two lone pair. How about the electron group arrangement? Electron group arrangement equal electron group. Yeah, yeah, lapa. Hmm? Octahedral. Octahedral. Yes, depends on electron group, yeah? So, octahedral. Then how about its hybridization? Madam, tukar tempat dia, eh? Hybridization, kita teruskan daripada electron group arrangement. SP3. 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 Enam electron group. SP3? D2. D2. Ah, so you need to choose the hybridization state which give you six electron group. Okay, so um, is that okay for you? Ah, the molecular shape boleh teruskan lah molecular shape lepas ini. Ah, molecular shape depends only on bonding pair and they give you square planar. So for XeFO, uh, hybridization state sp 3 d 2 molecular shape will be square planar. Silicon tetrachloride untuk C ni, dia punya electron group ar arrangement sama dengan molecular shape ialah tetrahedral. Sebab tak ada lone pair lah. Okay. Any question for this okay. one? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yang octahedral tu macam mana nak dapat dua lone pair darat dengan empat bony pair ke? Oh, bukan darat, tambah. Tambah jadi enam kan? Empat, empat. Tambah dua jadi enam. Kenapa? Salah ke? Kalau kalau enam, utai. Ah, uh, kena. <laughs> hey, Ivan ni. Ni betul lah. Hey, ni 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 ni. Yang sebelum ni kita belajar molecular shape kan. Kalau Ivan tengok dekat sini, kita kan ada enam group. It's a very start. Think over here. Nah, ini table ni. Electron group enam octahedral. Okta oh, bukan lapan eh, dia bukan organic chemistry tu kan? Octahedral six electron group. Okay. Okay, mana proceed? Tak pening ya kan? Dia tak ingat dah yang satu dia ni. Okay, we start with the simpler one. So now, uh, for those who having your template, you can use the template. For those who didn't print out the template, use a new page. Okay, for us to do the overall hybridization process. So, untuk soalan ini, memang dia satu page, satu uh, soalan lah, satu structure. Okay, so now you know about the hybridization state. So, we want to draw something. What you draw, how the overlapping will show you the molecular shape. Okay, so before we begin, you need to understand that hybridization process including four of this part. Okay, so in order to describe complete hybridization process, you may use the template. Okay, and part A, Lewis structure, EG stands for electron group, EGA, electron group arrangement, 
molecular shape bone angle hybridization so part a dia macam dia bagi satu ic ha bagi alamat dia bagi details untuk structure tersebut okay so electron group electron group arrangement for this one uh, hybridization molecular shape bone angle awak boleh letak mana-mana dulu dia tak ada priority dekat sini tapi mesti kena start dengan electron group lah Ha. And then after that for part B, you need to include electronic configuration and also orbital diagram. Part C, we want to include overlapping of orbital which you want to draw something and you need to label your drawing. And last one, part D, is your explanation. So we begin with a simple structures, beryllium dichloride. Okay, so dekat sini, uh, Mainlah peranan untuk awak punya uh, konsep dekat Lewis structure. That's why Madam said Lewis structure is very important which will lead to your uh, complete answer over here. Kalau Lewis structure salah, part A, part B, part C, part D, dia akan ikut salah semua. Okay. So Lewis structure in this case, BeCl2, electron group we have two with two bonding pair. Isi sama-sama ya. And electron group tadi kita sudah ceritakan tadi BEF2, ini BECL2. Tapi sama je, linear. Hybridization, based on two of electron group which give you which state? SP. SP, well done. And then the molecular shape, because we don't have any lone pair, molecular shape depends on electron group arrangement, is still linear. Last but not least, we have our bond angle in part A which is equals to 180. Uh, if you want to label straight away inside your Lewis uh, structure pun boleh. Tak nak, awak boleh tulis uh, tepi 180 as the bond angle. Is that alright for part A? Yes. Okay. And then part B, balance electronic configuration. Take notes out, we only consider valence electronic configurations. For So for beryllium, what would be its valence electronic configuration? Anyone? Two. Two apa? Two S2. Two S2. How about chlorine? The valence electronic configuration. Chlorine comes from period 3, group 17. 3 p 4. 3 p 5. 5. Okay. So beryllium 2 S2 and then chlorine 2 uh, 3 S2 3 p 5. So orbital diagram, we only uh, draw it for the central atom beryllium. So you have three points over here, yeah? We need to start off with ground state, promotion of electrons, and then the hybridization. Okay, so over here, let's draw this one, S to S. Okay, so since beryllium has two electrons inside 2S, so kita lukis dulu. Ah, dia ada dua electron pada kita punya dua S. Okay, so in order for us to make the bonding with another two chlorine atom, then we need to make this beryllium one electron each. Okay, we need to make it unpaired electron. Baru kita boleh buat sigma end to end overlapping. So here comes to your 2p orbital. Tapi 2p ni dia empty sebab di kita tak ada electron dekat 2p. Tak apa, kita lukis dulu. 2s lepas 2p kan? So awak masukkan 2p dekat ground state. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, so kita nak promotion. Promotion kenapa? Promotion sebab kita nak jadikan dia unpaired electron. Dekat sini, awak punya Lewis structure ada dua sigma bond. So kalau dua sigma bond, you require two unpaired electron. If you still remember our last week lesson. Nah, jadikan satu sigma bond, kita kena ada satu unpaired electron. So sekarang awak ada dua sigma, perlukan dua unpaired electron. So in this case, we draw it inside the promotions of electron 2s and we draw it back again, 2p. So promotion, one of the electron yang Madam highlightkan dekat CD, kita pindahkan dia ke 2p. Oh, promote, uh, naik atas, uh, 
bring the electrons to your 2p orbital. So now, just now we determine your hybridization is sp, isn't it? Uh, so dalam sp hybridization ada berapa hybrid orbital? sp ada berapa hybrid orbital? Dua kan? S1, P1. Senang saja. Guna jari boleh kira dah. S1, P1 ada dua hybrid orbital. So nampak Madam lukis dekat sini. Hybridization state SP. So bawah dua orbital ini tuliskan SP. So satu elektron kita turunkan ke, ke bawah. Another one over here. So that means I'm bringing down one orbital from 2s, one orbital from 2p to make my new hybrid orbitals of sp. Can you follow? Yes. Okay. Ada dua lagi tinggal kan? Dua p sini ada tiga. Kita guna satu saja. Dua lagi. Tulis kat bawah. Unhybridized. 2P. Kita tak guna. So kita label. Kita tak guna. Kita guna satu saja. Okay. Okay. Boleh ya. Nanti Meza akan tunjukkan satu contoh lagi. Ha. Okay. So now you have already got your orbital diagram. So next part we want to draw your orbital overlapping. Kita start daripada center. Okay, so we know that the center beryllium has a hybridization of sp. Masih ingat lagi sp? Dia punya shape macam mana? Ada dua yeah. bunga kan? Okay. Right, so kita label terus. Ah, ini adalah sp, ini adalah sp. Ah, so saya punya beryllium, saya letak tengah-tengah lah. So nampak lah beryllium. If you don't want to put in the middle, no problem. You took, you 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 label over here. Ah, pun boleh, tak ada masalah. So, janji awak label. Uh, so, we have to, so we can actually label it above the... Yeah, it, uh, either the, above you in the center. Uh, Alright, so SP is in the uh, loop, right? Yes. Kalau right. ada tempat lah dalam loop. Kalau tak ada tempat, boleh outside. Okay. So, at the... Surrounding atom is our chlorine, isn't it? So chlorine, which orbital are you using? Chlorine kita tak buat hybrid dah sebab dia hanya sigma bond. Nah, tadi Madam cakap kalau dia pi bond baru kita akan buat hybrid. So now surrounding atom, if you only got single bond, we will use the original atomic orbital. So kita tengok pada chlorine eh. Dekat sini, kalau awak nak rujuk dia punya... Uh, uh, orbital diagram. So this one you don't have to write. This one is just for your reference only. For chlorine, uh, the what's called uh, the orbital diagram look like this. That means we are using the last one, the unpaired electron, to make our overlapping. Is that okay? They do. Yeah. Um, I don't understand. Apa beza yang ni dengan yang next uh, next kita belajar tu eh? Orbit overlap tu. Yeah. Oh, yang sigma sigma tu dengan yang ni. Sigma sigma dengan yang ini. Ah, uh, yang sebelum ni kan kita ada belajar yang sigma. Okay, bilet. nanti Madam jelaskan eh. Sebenarnya dia sama cuma. Uh, Madam explain kan habis ini dulu. Nanti Madam bagi tahu eh. Okay. okay Madam. Okay, so we, we finished this one first, then I'll tell you what's the difference. So beryllium over here, we have sp hybridization. Okay, and then we are using the 3p for chlorine to put our overlapping. So this is a sigma bond, isn't it? So you look back at here, sigma bond, sigma bond. Okay, so untuk chlorine, kita akan guna 3p. So this one, one loop is 3p. Eh? Satu loop ini 3p. You want to put inside, put outside, no problem. Okay, so Mada asingkan warna untuk 3P di atomic orbital. And then we have the, uh, over this one is our chlorine lah, 3P. We use a different color. Okay. And then for another loop, another side also, we have another chlorine. 
Now we have another chlorine, also 3P. Okay, also a chlorine. So 3P outside. Lah. Okay. So now inside your overlappings over here, we have electrons. So matter label eh, dekat dalam sini, one electron share from chlorine, another electron share from beryllium. So this one makes you a sigma bond. So same thing happened to another BeCl bond. So one electron for beryllium, another electron from chlorine, and this one makes you a sigma bond. Okay, so this one looks something similar like your Lewis structure, isn't it, with the molecular shape. So you can see Cl, Be, Cl, Cl, Be, Cl. So the overall shape is look like your orbital overlapping. Okay, so sampai sini boleh kah? Boleh. Boleh, ya. So, Madam jawab soalan Atika dengan Elfan tadi. Kenapa hari tu kita belajar binya tak sama dengan yang ini kah? Soalan tadi? Okay. So, Jangan kita tengok. Macam nak applykan yang last week tu? Okay. Yang last week binya. So, H2, HF, F2, O2, HN2. All of this are simple molecule. Maksudnya kita boleh terus pakai atomic orbital tanpa buat hybrid. Sebab dia simple molecule sahaja. So kita boleh terus guna 2P, terus guna 2F, terus guna 1S untuk buat uh, overlapping. So it's the, still the same. Sigma N to N overlapping, pi side by side overlapping. Masih sama. Cuma untuk konsep hari tu kita belajar adalah direct orbital overlap. Maksudnya guna balik 1S, 2P, 3S, eh, sorry, 3, 3P tanpa buat hybridization. Tapi yang kita hari ni buat binya adalah kita sudah hybrid kan? Apa hybrid dia? Missing two or more uh, orbitals to form the new set of hybrid orbitals. So if you look at the example BECL2. So kita tengok pada dia binya orbital diagram eh. Nak tengok pada ini. Sekarang kalau awak punya beryllium, 2S2, satu pair. Macam mana awak nak buat sigma bond kalau tak ada ampere elektron? This is the reason why we are doing hybrid orbital. You want to create a new hybrid orbitals in order to form the sigma bond. So untuk uh, structures yang complicated, that means more than two uh, an atom. Okay, more than two atom. We need to do hybridization. Sebab kita tak tak boleh guna original atomic at orbital to do overlapping. Is that okay? Ada kamu hmm. ada jawab soalan awak Atika dengan Irfan? Ibu memahami. Hmm. Okay, so for part D, we want to explain how the sigma bond is formed or maybe how the pi bond is formed. But this case, we are starting with sigma first. So two sigma bonds formed by overlapping N to N. Ini keywords mesti kena ada. Okay, between sp hybrid orbitals of beryllium. Okay, with 3p atomic orbitals of chlorine. So chlorine, because sigma bond only, we use surrounding atom, we using the original atomic orbitals. Macam mana nak dapat original atomic orbital? Tengok pada dia punya electronic configuration. Okay. Mari tunjuk satu lagi contoh boleh? Sebelum kita okay. Banyak contoh lagi Nanda nak tunjuk sebenarnya. Ha, tapi awak ikut ya. Ada soalan tanya. Okay. Tarik nafas dulu eh. Nanda bukan nak tarik nafas macam mana nak ajar ni. Okay. We start with another simple one before we proceed to their combination. Ah, Got the bonding pair, got the lone pair. Macam mana kita nak isi. Ha, macam mana kita nak interpret. Okay. So now B, BF3. Madam, draw this one straight away following the shape already, yeah? Because BF3, you do it quite a lot of time already. 
Uh, so this is uh, BF3 with three electron group. We have three bonding pair. How about the electron group arrangement? Trigonal plana. Okay, very good. Trigonal plana. How about the hybridization? Guna jari awak. Berapa? S? P. Yeah, SPP, other dual P, so SP2 for its hybridization. Okay, so remember hybrid, hybridization for central because for your Lewis structure surrounding are sigma bond only. Okay, molecular shape pun sama sebab dia tak ada lone pair. Ah, dia semua adalah bonding pair, so dia sama ke, macam awak punya Lewis, uh, sorry, awak punya electron group arrangement. So in your Lewis structure also, you label lah awak punya sigma bond. So over here, we have three sigma bond. That means we need three unpaired electrons to do overlapping. Okay, three unpaired electrons of boron. And then our last column over here, we put bond angle is 120 following the shape. Trigonal planar. Trigonal shape lah. Okay, part B, valence electronic configuration. Boron, what is the electronic configuration? It's come from group 13. Period 2. 2S2, 2P1. 3S2, 3P1. Agree. Uh, sorry, 2, uh. period 2. 2S2, 2P1. Okay, how about 4 2s2, 2p5. Okay. And then after that, we have the orbital diagram of center boron. So now again, we, we, we need to label out ground state, promotions of electron, and then what is the hybridization. So just now we already identified the hybridization sp2. So right now in front, sp2 hybridization. So for the ground state, you use the balanced electronic configurations for boron. So 2s and 2p. So 2s ada dua elektron, 2p ada satu elektron saja. So now, in the ground state, we only got one ampere elektron. Satu ampere elektron ini tidak dapat untuk buat tiga sigma bond. Okay, that's why we have to do hybridization. So before we do hybridization, we need to promote the electron first. Sama juga 2s, 2p. So kita... Promotekan salah satu elektron. Okay, Madam highlightkan untuk membantu awak nampakkannya. Okay, we promote the electron that highlighted in yellow to 2p orbital. So now, after the promotions of electron, you can see there is three single unpaired electron. Okay, so we want to make three of these unpaired electron to make our hybrid orbital. So remember, sp2, there is three hybrid orbital. So, nampak tiga line yang Madam lukis ini, dia dekat sama-sama. Ah, sebab energy level dia sama. Dekat bawah sini, kita labelkan sp2. And then each of them having a single ampere electron. So, now, 2p left with one empty orbital. So, dekat sini, kita labelkan unhybridized 2p. Itu sahaja. Can you follow? Yes. Am I going too fast? No. no. Okay. So now into our part C, we want to draw it. So SP3, what will be your, uh, the, the look look like? Dia nampak macam trigonal planar, isn't it? So SP2, kita ada tiga loop. Ah, ada tiga loop. So kita start dengan kita punya boron center, yeah? So over here, you can see there is three loop. So we label first. This is the center boron, and then we have the hybridizations sp2, sp2, sp2. Is that okay? Boneka. Okay. Okay. Now we want to draw our terminal or surrounding foreign atom. So foreign, we are using 2p. So tengok pada white balance electronic configuration eh. 2p5, that means another one orbital of 2p is only got a single electron. Okay, so over here we will use the 2p for foreign. Okay, so using another color. 
2p for 4 e to make the orbital. So, kalau awak isi dekat sini, satu elektron daripada 4 e satu lagi daripada boron, give you sigma bond. So, same thing happens to another two more bond. Uh, so, Madam Lucas, and then you drawing at the same time. Huh? So, another two more loops over here. And uh, we label the um, atoms, 4 e 2p, 4 e 2p. And then inside here, we fill in with the electron. One from fluorine, one from boron, make it sigma. One from fluorine, one from boron, make it sigma. So if you refer back to the Lewis structures with the shape, you will see your overlapping look like your Lewis structure. Of course, you need to incorporate your shape into your Lewis structure. Boleh ikut tak? Boleh. Ada nampak tak dia sudah makin on track dah? Yes, yeah. we can now visualize it even better. Even better, ya. Yeah? That's why you need to practice a lot. But of course, siapa yang lemah dekat Lewis structure, awak kena uh, practice hard on Lewis structure, ya. Yeah? Okay, our last part over here, part D. Um, Madam, help you to fill in the blanks over here. So in your BF3, there's three sigma bond. Okay, so three sigma bonds formed by overlapping end to end. So still in sigma lah. Okay, between the sp2 hybrid orbitals of boron, uh, because boron now you have three sigma, so sp2. Okay, and then for fluorine, we are using the original atomic orbitals, but in this case, it's 2p. Okay, so 2p atomic orbitals of foreign atoms. Boleh ke semua? Ya, boleh. Okay. Madam, tunjuk lagi satu contoh yang uh, ada lone pair. So, what if Madam yang sebelum BFCl2 dengan BF3 is the simple structure. But if you come into H2O, so now H2O... Anyone remember the molecular shape? In the, in the middle. Mm -hmm. Madam, buat uh, terus Lewis structures dengan molecular shape eh. So, akan nampak V-shape dekat sini. Ha, tapi awak boleh boleh juga awak practice Lewis structures. Lepas tu, uh, figure electron group baru cairkan dia punya molecular shape pun tak ada masalah. Ha, sebab kita sudah buat banyak kali, so dekat Lewis structure, Madden straight away put in your uh, molecular shape. So, okay. is it advisable for us to actually combine the molecular... If you can, better. If you can, better. Tapi kalau awak untuk structure yang awak tak pernah jumpa, better you start with Lewis structure. Alright, so if you're uh, familiar with the uh, structure, we can straight, straight away, away go for... Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. So okay. if you want to play safe, just uh, use the normal Lewis structure, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So it will carry on. Huh? So over here, electron group four. Anyone want to tell me the combination? Uh, two lone pairs. Mm -hmm. Two bonding pairs. Okay. So electron group arrangement following electron group, which should give you. Anyone? Tetrahedral. 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 Remember, uh, electron group for uh, electron group arrangement follow electron groups. Okay, hybridization also follow electron groups, which give you sp three. Ikut jari awak sppp ada empat kan sppp, so it give you sp three. Okay, and then a molecular shape over here, Madam catat dekat sini. Molecular shape dia special. Dia hanya tengok pada bonding pair saja. So, awak jangan uh, confuse dengan electron group arrangement dan benda yang lain. Only molecular shape following bonding pair. Okay, so in this case, our molecular shape of H2O, it is a V shape or a bent shape. You choose either one. And the bond angle, anyone remember the specific one? H2O need to use specific? 1, 0? 4.5. Yes, thank you very much. 1, 0, 4.5 for water every time. Okay. 
And then we proceed into, oh, before we proceed, Lewis structure, how many sigma bond? Can you please label on your Lewis structure straight away? There is two sigma. Okay. And then we proceed to part B. Hydrogen, valence electronic configuration. Yes. 1S1. 1S1, very easy. How about oxygen? 2S2. 2S4. 2P4. 2P4. Uh, because oxygen, 6 valence electron. Okay, who is the center? Who is the center? Oxygen. Okay, so orbital diagram for lowering oxygen. Okay, so we put the ground state in first, yeah? 2S and 2P. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, Madam nak tanya dekat sini. Adakah awak bina unpair elektron cukup untuk buat sigma bond? Hmm, cukup. Cukup. Cukup kan? Berapa sigma hmm. yang awak perlu? Berapa sigma? Dua. Dua. Berapa ampere elektron? Dua. Dua. Cukup tak? Dua. Cukup. Cukup. Okay. So, bila cukup promotion, tak, pay tak payah buat apa-apa. Kita hanya copy back only. So, one, two, one, two, one and one. Sebab bilangan ampere elektron dia cukup untuk buat sigma bond. So, we copy back. Okay, because we want to proceed to hybridization. Okay, so hybridization, tadi kita cakap dia adalah sp3. sp3, how many hybrid orbital? sppp, how many hybrid orbital? Four. Four. So, kita jadikan ke empat, empat uh, eh, orbital ini sebagai kita punya hybrid orbital. One, two, three, four. sp3. We got one lone pair, two lone pair, three, uh, it is a single bond, one, uh, one single electron, and then two single electron. This is why we say that hybridization will follow electron group. That means it includes your bonding pair and also lone pair in hybridization. Do you get me? So, untuk electron group, electron group arrangement sampai hybridization, bonding pair dengan lone pair, kita ambil semua. So, tak ada yang tinggal. So, tak adalah unhybrid 2P. Is everyone okay over here? No, everything makes sense. No wonder. Alright. That's why Madam said, sabar ya, sampai akhir sekali, nanti practice, 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 awak akan nampak. Okay, so now, oxygen, sp3, the loops following tetrahedral. So, awak lukis dulu, awak punya tetrahedral center, uh, tetrahedral center from our oxygen. So, we have one loop, um, two, three, and four. Okay, so label all of them in the center with oxygen. And then we have sp3, 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 and sp3. Okay. Have you done this one? Awak binya look gemuk ke, kurus ke, tak kisah asalkan nampak tetrahedral. Makin lama practice awak akan makin makin mahir dalam lukisan awak. Nanti akan jadi makin kemas, makin cantik. Okay, so now. Let us fill in the electron. So pay attention to the hybridizations over here. Madam highlighted in yellow. Okay. So the first two pair is your lone pair. So we'll fill in first. Okay. Your lone pair inside one of the loop. Your second lone pair inside another loop. Okay. The past two, kalau kita refer balik kepada our binya, um, ox, uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen, we are using 1S for overlapping. So, here comes to your 1S hydrogen. So, ada dua kan? So, ada dua 1S. Okay, so now we label over here. This is 1S for our hydrogen. This is 1S for my hydrogen. So, inside the overlapping over here, one electron from hydrogen, 
one electron from oxygen make you the first sigma. Another single electron from hydrogen, another single electron from oxygen give you another sigma. So when you see the shape of your Lewis structure, nampak sama tak? Make them turns around only, yeah? the Lewis structures make them turns to right, uh, change the side only. Okay, so Abinia, overlapping of orbitals, it looks like the shape of your Lewis structure. Is everyone good? Yes, madam. Okay. Boleh ikut, madam, ya? Boleh. Okay, so part D, how many sigma bond are you forming? Two. Two sigma bond. So two sigma bond formed by overlapping end to end between our sp3 hybrid orbitals of oxygen and also one s atomic orbitals of the surrounding hydrogen atoms. Is it okay? So, ini contoh yang ada lone pair dengan bonding pair. Ha, tapi tak tak ada masalah. Asalkan awak nampak aja dia punya hybridization keluar macam mana. Okay? Let me know if you have done. Then we proceed to the species which is having charges. Ada soalan ke setakat ni? Standing question? Tak ada ya? Boleh madam proceed? Boleh. Okay. Woo. Nah Hazim, contoh ni XEF3 positif. Nampak ke dia punya shape? Tahu tak shape dia? Tak tahu kan? Kalau tak tahu, kita tahu. kena start daripada Lewis structure yang biasa sebelum kita buat shape dia. Ha, ini untuk ikut step kalau kita tak tahu dia bina molecular shape macam mana. So, you cannot straight away put it in the, the Lewis structure into shape. Okay? So, we begin over again for the Lewis structure. Xe, we have 8 balance electron. 3, 4 ring give you? 3, 7 give you 21. How about the charge? 21. Positive uh, one? Uh, so, got plus one, so minus, minus one electron. Yeah, so overall, 20. 28. Okay, so shape dia macam mana? Okay, XE kita ada tiga uh, surrounding atoms. Okay, so overall over here we have a positive charge. Okay, complete the surrounding with octet electron. How many left? Four. Agree? Two. How many electrons left? Two. Kalau satu fluorin dekat sini, lapan. Kita ada tiga fluorin kan? So, three times eight give you twenty-four. Twenty-eight minus twenty-four give you four remaining. Okay, ada hmm. empat valence electron yang, yang tinggal. Maksudnya ada berapa lone pair? Uh, two lone pair. Two okay. lone pair. So, two lone pair, four on top of our central denon. Okay, so kalau kita lukis macam ni, shape dia sudah keluar dah nampak dah shape dia. Okay, so kita isi dulu eh, electron groups. How many in total electron groups? Five. Five, yes. We have three bonding pair with two lone pair. Electron group arrangement. Trigonal by pyramidal. Trigonal by pyramidal. Okay, you need to learn about the spelling, yeah? How about the hybridization? SP3D. Yes, very good. So S1 and then P, you have 3 plus another 1 for D. So SP3D. Molecular shape. T shape. T shape. Okay. And the bond angle will be 90. Not less than 90 yeah, because of the T shape. So the bond angle will be exactly 90 perpendicular. 
Okay, so put an ID over here. And then part B, balance electronic configuration. We have Xenon and also Foreign. So Xenon come from which period, anyone? Madam also need to search for it. Period 5. Xenon from which uh, period? 5. 5. Group 18. Uh, sorry, which period? Sure, yeah? Madam want to check again, double confirm. Yes, 5. Okay, so it's from period 5, so it gives you 5S2, 5P. 5P6. 8 balance electrons, so we'll give you in total 8 balance electron. How about foreign? Ready to that again. Two. So, central atom is your xenon. Okay, so now the ground state will be following Zenon. So you draw it first, 5S and 5P. And then all of it is full. Okay, it's full. So tell me how many sigma bond do we need to make in your uh, Zenon F3 positive? How many sigma bond? Three. Three, right? So one, two, three. So a three sigma bond will require a three single unpaired electron. Tapi dekat sini ada unpaired electron tak? Ada unpaired electron? Tak ada. Tak ada. Kejap, ya, yeah, Madam check. Oh, we forgot about one thing ah dekat sini sebenarnya kita perlukan 3 ampere elektron madam forgot one very important thing okay uh madam isn't supposed to be 5d have 5 instead of 4 uh space 5d having yeah yeah oh, haven't haven't uh, ha having haven't complete yet madam forgot one very important thing we forgot about what? Madam highlight dekat sini. Apa yang Madam forgot? Formal charge. Formal charge, yes. So, calculate for your formal charge. For in, 7 minus 6 dot minus 1 life minus 7 give you 0, 0, 0. How about Zenon? Positive 1. Positive one. So we want to see the overall positive charge fall onto which one. Uh, so bila Madam sampai sini, Madam akan nampak um, something is wrong. So maybe something related to formal charge. This one Madam also forgot to tell you. Okay, so when you have a formal charge, okay, in your central atom, then something we need to do in your balance electronic configurations of xenon. That means we cannot use the neutral xenon anymore. Okay, so xenon positive, that means we're missing one electron, losing one electron. So what will be its electronic configurations now? Uh, 5s2, 5p5. 5p5, after losing one electron. Okay, highlight dekat sini ya, kena kira former charge. Okay, so now we uh cancel one more electron lah inside our 5p sub shell over here and then we are making for our xenon positive for us for your center uh xe positive okay so in your lewis structures we require three sigma bond but now in your ground state we only got one unpaired electron okay so we need to do promotion in order to get three unpaired electron. So, untuk our punya ground state, uh, 5D orbital, walaupun kita tak ada electron, letak juga sebab kita nak guna. Uh, you need to provide the space for us for us to do the promotions of electron. So, now Madam put it back, uh, 5P and then 5D. Okay. Nak promote berapa banyak electron? How many electron you need to promote? Uh, one, two. Satu sahaja. 
Ha, satu saja sebab bila awak promotekan elektron dan madam highlight dekat kuning sini, nanti awak akan createkan 3 ampere elektron. Dah cukup dah untuk kita buat sigma bond. Is that okay? So now in your uh, uh, your in your promotions of electrons over here, you can see. Ah, saya nampak dua long pair, saya nampak tiga ampere electron. So that's three ampere electron is for you to do your hybridization. As to for you to do your hybridization for three sigma bond. So sp three d hybridization, taking one for five s, three five p, and one from five d, making five hybrid orbitals. So sp3d, we got one lone pair, two lone pair, one sigma, two sigma, three sigma. So lagi empat 5d, kita just label saja. Unhybridize 5d. Maknanya kita tak, tak guna. Lagi empat betul kat 5d ni, unhybridize. Okay, can you follow up until this part? Yes. Okay, untuk species yang other charge, dia punya level up a little bit. But it's not the, 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 the toughest. Ah. Toughest nanti ada yang pi bond, ada yang charge. So we will proceed step by step. So everyone's okay with the species with formal charge? Yes. Sampai sini boleh ya? Boleh, madam. Okay. So, let's just draw something. Ah, SP3D. We got five hybrid orbitals. That means we have five loops. Okay, madam, buat macam ini eh. Ah, sebab... Eh. Tak cukup tempat untuk madam buat melintang. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Nampak pelik sikit kan? Okay, and then we label, yeah? So, this is our center xenon, Xe positive. Bila kita lukis, kita ikut center atom yang kita letak kat sini. So, Xe positive. Okay, and then over here we have sp3d, sp3d, sp3d and sp3d. Ada lima orbitals. Dia akan nampak makin complicated lah. Is that okay? Madam, yang tadi tu promotion tu, dia nak dia nak dapatkan macam mana tadi? Two bonding pair. Ke macam mana? Dekat sini eh. Awak nak uh, untuk promotion elektron ke? Ha ha ha. Okay, so for this one ah. Uh, if you look at here, inside our Lewis structures, we have two lone pair. Uh, so when you look at, when you check in the ground state, okay, I only need two lone pair. So I will keep this two, two lone pair as a pair. So saya akan kekal dua pasangan elektron lah. Yang lain kita, kita buatkan dia sebagai single elektron. Oh, okay, okay, baik, baik. Okay, so uh, also the same thing, lah, hybridization. So also we have two lone pair in this case. Okay, so we want to draw the overlapping uh, using our 2P for 4 e. Your look is cantik cantik lah. Ha. Cantik, tak cantik tak apa. Asalkan nampak T-shape. Okay, so I have a 2, 2P for my 4 And I have 3 4 in at the corner here. Surrounding atoms, 2P, 2P, 2P. Okay. And then I need to label my sigma bond. I need to label my lone pair electron. So maybe I'll begin with lone pair much more easier. So the one that didn't overlap with fluorine, kita masukkan lone pair. Okay. And then one electron from fluorine, one electron from xenon. Make you sigma. Make you sigma bond. And then another sharing of electron make a sigma bond. Okay. Tapi lukisan madam dia nampak macam Lewis structure ni. Xenon and then FFF. It's too long pair. Kalau, kalau awak nak terbalikkan uh, nampak macam Lewis structure yang ke atas pun boleh. 
Maksudnya T-shape bawa hadap ke bawah. Uh, so that means you have the shape like this. Kalau nak ikut shape yang ke atas eh, it will look something like this. Yes. So when we were to draw the uh, orbital overlapping, we can actually base on Lewis uh, structure. the Lewis structure instead of with the, the shape. Ge geometry. Lewis structure with the shape. Alright. Uh, so that means Lewis structure with the geometry. Bukan Lewis structure saja, eh? Lewis structure dengan shape sekali. Tapi sebab dekat sini, dia memang dah T-shape dah. So, when dia tak lukis balik semula. Ha, dia memang sama macam T-shape kan? So, kita ikut je. Okay. So, kat bawah pun kita label lah. Sigma pun kita ada tiga. Okay, so overlapping end to end between. Between, between. SP3, D hybrid orbital of Zenon, Zenon positive eh, over here, XE positive wave, 2P atomic orbitals of fluorine. So label, dekat sini awak kena tahu eh, label mesti labelkan element, central or surrounding atoms. Okay, and then you need to label the orbitals, whether it's uh, atomic orbitals or hybrid orbitals. And then you need to label electrons um, and also your sigma or pi bond. Uh, so label, bila dia minta awak lukis, label memang including all of this. Element, orbitals, electron and sigma or pi bond. Can I proceed some more? Yes. Kalau kisah eh? Okay. Madam rasa tinggal masa uh, 10 minit saja. Madam tak proceed eh. Tapi exercises, you can use the template. Okay, given over here. Wait a minute. Madam open the template for you. Where is the template? Okay. You can use this template to... Uh, draw your overlapping. Okay, otherwise you can use a white piece of paper. Cuma isikan, isi dia sajalah. Ha, you you extract the, 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 the content and then you do it on a piece of plain paper. Pun boleh, tak nak ikut template pun boleh. Asalkan benda yang kita nak awak ada dalam kertas awak. Dalam kerja awak. Okay, so for your submissions for GC today, Okay, mana pilih nak tiga soalan sahaja. Okay, tadi kita buat apa ya? Okay, let's just start with uh, NH3. And then I want a PCL5. Okay, and then I want I3 minus. So, untuk tiga soalan ni saja ya. Ke banyak sangat. Boleh ke? Boleh. Boleh, Madam. Boleh, Madam. Try your best lah. If, if, if you can, you try to do the, all of the questions. Okay. And then uh, on Tuesday, we will go into your ultimate le level. Uh, that means hybridizations in a multiple central atom or the species which containing double bond, triple bond, or maybe all in one. It containing double bond, triple bond. At the same time, it contains formal charge. Okay. So you just practice first for the single central species. We charge or without charges. Okay. Ada soalan ke sebelum Madam bagikan link untuk formatic assessment? Uh, Madam, are you... Yes? Oh, you're going to share the link also at the chat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam is going to share the link. So, those who cannot scan, you can uh click on the link. Hold on, ya. Okay, so Madam bagi link dalam... uh. Checkbox, yeah. Checkbox on the corner here, and also giving you to scan. So either one lah. Siapa yang nak buka link boleh, nak scan pun boleh. 
Sama jugalah kita ada empat soalan. Uh, try to answer it based on the hybridizations that we learned today. Dah set scan? Dah. 